On Friday nights when families gather around the Shabbat table and they sing Shalom Aleichem, welcoming in the Shabbat angels, then they say Eshet Chayel, that beautiful song from the book of Proverbs that speaks about the virtues of a Jewish woman. After that, many parents will bless their children. And the blessing that is given to boys is Yesimcha Elokim Ke'ephraim Bechi Menashe. May the Lord make you like Ephraim and Menashe. There's a blessing for girls. Yesimech Elohim Kesara Rivka Rachel Valeya. May God make you like the mothers of the Jewish people, like Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah. But that blessing is a much more recent blessing. In the old days, the blessing was given both to boys and girls, that God should make you like Ephraim and Manasseh. And the source of this beautiful blessing is from this week's Pasha, Pasha Vayechi, the Pasha that ends the book of Bereshit of Genesis. Jacob has been living in Egypt now for many years. He's an elderly man, and he's come to the end of his days. And he summons together his children and his grandchildren, and he blesses them. He calls his son Joseph, and he says, Joseph, come. And Joseph comes with his two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, his two sons who were born in Egypt. And Jacob blesses them. And he says that God should make you like Ephraim and Manasseh. And indeed, the Torah says that whenever a Jew will bless their child, they will say, may you be like Ephraim and Manasseh. Now, this is somewhat of a strange blessing. Why are these two selected as being the ones that we should want our children to be like? After all, they're not even really part of the 12 tribes. It's true that Joseph's tribe was broken into two, Ephraim and Manasseh. But why don't we say God should make you like Shimon and Levi? Or God should make you like Ruvain and Yisachar? Or God should make you like Joseph and Benjamin? Why do we refer to these grandchildren of Jacob? And there were many other ja uh, grandchildren. What about the righteous twins of Yehuda, Peretz and Zerach? Why don't we say God should make you like the righteous twins of Yehuda? What is so special about Ephraim and Manasseh? And this is something that many of the commentators explain. But if we contemplate it for a moment, we'll see that there is something really unique about Ephraim and Manasseh. And that is, they are the only grandchildren of Jacob who were not born in Canaan. They were born in Egypt. Joseph had been living in Egypt. First of all, he was a slave. Later on, he became the viceroy, a person of power and prestige. And for all intents and purposes, he was the only Hebrew in Egypt. And he had these two sons. The rest of his brothers were living in Canaan. They were living in a Jewish environment. It wasn't that difficult for them to raise their children in a Hebrew or an Israelite or a Jewish type of environment because that's where they were. But Joseph raised his two children, Ephraim and Nasha, as strong Jews in spite of the fact that there was absolutely no Jewish environment and nothing in the surrounds that was Jewish. And still he, he was able to raise them as strong Jews. And perhaps that is what we are saying to our children when we bless them on Friday night. It's easy to be a strong Jew when you're living in Jerusalem, when you're living in Meir Sha'arim, when you're living perhaps in Brooklyn, surrounded by Judaism and Jewish stores and kosher restaurants and yeshivas and day schools. But sometimes a Jew is in a situation where there isn't that much Judaism around. They're cut off from the general life of Judaism. For example, as many, many hundreds and thousands, hundreds of thousands of Jews were during the time of communism in Russia. They lived a life that was cut off from Judaism. And yet many people were still able to raise their children as proud Jews. And therefore we say to our children, you shouldn't be like Ruvan and Shivon, although they were righteous people, because that wasn't so difficult to be righteous. But you should be like Ephraim and Manasseh. Even when you're out of your comfort zone, even when you're out of your Jewish setting, you should nevertheless be proud Jews with a proud Jewish heritage and people who are able to observe the mitzvot and the Torah of God. What greater blessing can there be than to give that to our children, that they should be proud and courageous to be Jews wherever they may be. I wish you a Shabbat Shalom.